Hey everybody, welcome back to this Let's Play of Final Fantasy III for the PSP. I am Drac, and we have discovered an airship in the middle of nowhere. And somebody's in it! Alright. Hmm, wonder who this is. Eek! Who are you? What are you doing here? We could ask you the same thing. Exactly! This is Sid's airship, and he's letting us use it! There you go, Luneth. All right, everybody, introduce you to Ruffia. Raised in Cassis by the mithril slip, smith Taka, whose rigorous training led her to run away from home. Again. And obviously, you guys can see she's kind of the obligatory female character of our party. I'm Ruffia, and I'll have you know that my father and I forged the parts of this ship back in Cassis. All right, well, good on you. So that means you're the blacksmith's daughter. You have to help us make a mithril ring. Well, this works out. Yes, that's the only way we'll be able to lift the curse on Cassis. I, um, I can't. I can't make mithril rings. I didn't study that far. I didn't want to. Swell. I don't think Skid's going to be particularly happy with this news. Wait, I know where we can find a ring. All right, well, cool. Refi is helpful, helpful now. My father forged a mithril ring for King Sasane a long time ago. He should still have it. All right. Nice. Let me go with you. I can't make mithril rings, but I want to help my father and the people of Cassis. Good on you, Refia. I think she should come with us, Luneth. You don't think because of plot convenience she should? Me too. Slacking off saved her from the curse, so maybe that luck might rub off on us. <laughs> nice, Luna. Hey, that's not funny! It is to me. Refia has joined the party! Alright, so now we have the party count at three. And let's go ahead and take the all aboard! Let's grab our airship five minutes into the game. Alright, so last time, if people have not seen the previous part, and you should, uh, Luneth was chosen, apparently, by a crystal to bring back hope. And so we went to the village of Kazus, and everybody's a ghost. The only way to fix that is a mithril ring, and as you guys found out, apparently King Sasane has one. So let's go take care of this. Go to the castle! Oh, look, here's another guy. A terrible curse has befallen the people in Castle Sassane while I was gone. And this is a really bad British accent, but okay. Only the power of a mithril ring may save them, I am told. But Kazus is suffering from the same fate as Sassane. I must do something, but where will I find a mithril ring? Uh-oh. I'm the daughter of the blacksmith of Kazus. The king must still have the ring my father made him. We've come to borrow the King's Mithra Ring to save Cassus. Will you let us through? Ah, yeah, think about it. An audience with the King. Yes, I believe I can arrange that. Come, I will be waiting in the throne room. And if people want to give me crap for the fact that all of them sound the same... Deal with it. I mean, these... You'll find later, the, these characters are really kind of the same in a lot of their origins and things like that, so... Uh, I don't see a real a whole lot of reason to change the voices the way I've done them. But now we have to go have an audience with the King of Castle Sassane. Alright. There we go, and everybody's a ghost here, too. The Jin's curse has befallen us all, and I am no exception. Sire, these younglings have come seeking the Mithril Ring to counter the curse. Younglings! You're as young as we are! The Mithril Ring. You seek to use its power to banish the Jin once again. Well, duh. I would grant you this boon, however, my daughter holds the ring, and she went missing shortly before the curse was cast upon us. Of course. If the princess holds the ring, the jinn may have taken her. Yeah. 
If this is so, I fear for my precious Sarah. The djinn must have taken her to, uh, to its cave to the north. Don't worry, sir. We'll get her back. Go, Luna. Sire, I would like to ask you for your leave to accompany these brave souls to the sealed cave and rescue Lady Sarah. People might remember in the first game, the princess's name was also Sarah. A loyal soldier of King Sasane's army, he narrowly escaped the djinn's curse. His prime concern is finding the missing Princess Sarah. Everybody say hi to Ingus! Eh, I think his name's okay. You have my leave, Ingus, unless there are any objections. Of course not! His source is worth twice that of these two! I'm waiting for them to be offended. Well, that's not fair, but I agree that having one of the king's men would help us a lot. Luneth, that's not defending yourself. Ingus has joined the party. And if people hadn't figured this out, there are four heroes of light like before. There is a secret passageway in the sealed cave. Search for the skeleton key. All right. I'm counting on you and your friends, Ingus. Banish the djinn and save us all. Yeah, this has a very Heroes of Light kind of story, like one did. But it's a little bit more complex than that. And that's why... I, it's not like one of my top favorite, but it's way more up there than two. So that's, that's the comparison for you. All right, and I think at this point I actually did take a break to go uh, do some grinding. So we're just going to need to do a quick transition here. Uh, for people who have never watched my Final Fantasy LPs, I'm just going to point this out here now. Grinding is not part of this. Do not get grinding on these videos. So I'm just I'm pointing that out right now. And I did look around for the cave just to make sure I knew where it was. Now I'm just checking my menu really quick to see my level because I did grind for a little bit here. But yeah, like I said, no grinding on video. It's just going to be story, guys. If, if you don't like that, I apologize. But uh, we are going to be transitioning pretty soon. There we go. Magical transition. And actually, before we go to the, nor the northern cave, there actually is some stuff at Sasane to get. Uh, some great items. So we're going to get them. While we're doing uh, while we're doing this, uh, so I had some thoughts on games before. I'm going to go ahead and finish them. Uh, like I was saying before, I have beaten DMC Devil May Cry along with its DLC. Um, I'm, I'm kind of 50-50 with it because I understand why people don't like DMC. I also understand, you know, I like it, but at the same time, I like the old, the way things were done beforehand. So I get a lot of people, you know, where there has been talk of a new DMC or another Devil May Cry, but they're like, okay, is it going to be five, like with the old series, or is it going to be DMC two? I'm fine with either or. I think they've they've done enough to to justify a second game to see if maybe it improves on the things I don't like. But yeah, it's not that bad. Um, Virgil's Downfall was a little bit of a disappointment as far as gameplay. But, you know, where I like the corniness of the original Devil May Cry games, the gameplay in DMC I kind of liked better. I think it flowed a little bit better than, than in Devil May Cry. So, it's like it's like a 7.5 for me. It's a C. Um, I obviously did have some problems with story. I have mentioned I did not like the, the whole Bill O'Reilly boss. I thought that was stupid. Um, and a couple of other bosses just bugged the living crap out of me, and, and some of the cutscenes, you know, have a story unfold and bug the living crap out of me, too. But I didn't hate it. So, uh, and it actually, from there, I'm actually going to move on to, uh, this one gets requested a lot by Rockstar fans. Red Dead Redemption. I'm going to bounce over to that and so you'll get my thoughts on that game as I go along. And the other game that I have completed is Final Fantasy 13 2. I finally finished it. Um, I got what I th what I think would be considered a good ending, and I just, again, I don't have the time, if people remember from Dragon Warrior, so I went and watched some of the secret endings, um, which, again, did not make a whole lot of sense, but I guess set things up to make lightning returns make sense. 
but that's okay. So, overall, I like the game. The wibbly wobbly timey wimey bugged me a lot, but it's okay. I mean, it's it's what I expected from a from a Roman numeral sequel, which isn't much. So it's okay. It became kind of grindy for me at the end because the three Bahamuts bugged the crap out of me. Ooh, we get a White Slayer, but it's a trap. And this is actually a little mini boss. It's a Griffin that's guarding the Sword White Slayer. So yeah, that's that's my thoughts on it, and from there, I'm actually going to be moving on to, and I've been excited for this one because of E3, uh, Dragon Age Origins. I'm going to tackle that on the 360, so I'll let you guys know what I think of it as soon as I have thoughts. <laughs> I haven't played it yet. Um, so that's all, that's all the games I finished. The other thing I'd, I'd also like to point out is I finished the main campaign for Borderlands, and I get a lot of the problems that people had with it. But I also started up the DLC, and I did the the Zombie Island of Dr. Ned, and that kind of redeemed it. it. It feels a lot better than the main story. It's a lot more hilarious, and I enjoyed it particularly, and I'm, I'm looking forward to going to... Um, I think the next DLC I'm going to take on is uh, the Secret Armory of General Knox. I'm not going to take on the Underdome, but... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm liking it so far. I'm actually doing that for Draken Shadow, uh, the possibility of doing that game. I'm not sure where we're standing with it, but um, it's fun. I like it. Uh, the story was a little lackluster for me, but the DLC is making up for that wholeheartedly. It's very fun. So that with that said, and then also um, another game that I've been getting into is Bioshock Infinite. Uh, this replaced Infamous in my schedule, and uh, I'm not too far into it, but wow. <laughs> I get the applause that game got. It's uh, already, I am I'm totally fixated on the story. Uh, I'm looking forward to what comes next, and it actually feels, in my opinion, like I like the first Bioshock, but I hated the second one. Um... And this flows a lot better than the first Bioshock game, so I'm very excited. I'm a little disappointed because this is the last irrational one, but I'm, I'm looking forward to getting through it. And uh, I, I'm even going to play the... Uh, I'm not going to play the, the Skies DLC, which is like co uh, PvP, I guess, but I will go into Rapture because that sounds like it's going to be fun. Overall, I'm enjoying it. Um... But I will, I'll keep you guys updated as I go along. Because Bioshock Infinite uh, is right now very much got my attention. Uh, and I'm trying to think of some other games that I, I haven't covered. Um, I guess a quick Spiral update. I am, I think, like three quarters through the game. I'm in the last few levels collecting stuff. Sorry, guys. Spyro just isn't hitting it for me. Um, it, it just feels so much like a, just an absolute collectathon that it's not enjoyable to me. I get why people like it, and I think it's very quirky and, and very fun, but the fact that it's a collectathon bugs the absolute ever loving crap out of me. And so I don't think I will be going too far into uh, the Spyro series if this continues. I'll probably go to Spyro 2, but, you know, if I still have problems with the gameplay, I might not go to Spyro 3. I don't know yet. But yeah, so lots of new things to cover. Oh, and also, if, if you are grinding and you want to not have to spend money, come to Castle Sasane, and you can get a rest here. And, oh, I slept like a log. You'll get that every time. It's I actually laughed at it after a while. It's like, did you sleep like a log? I don't know. Did you? And right now I'm looking for secret passages because there are a few other chests that I need to get. It's a fine mess that someone's gotten us into. What will become in this kingdom? Well, we're here to fix that. So don't worry about that too much, guys. Don't worry. We'll fix it. Oh, is this the one? No. I swear, there are secret passages here. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we're able to get some of the secret passage uh, items. We already got the White Slayer, and I think we've already equipped it to Ingus. 
I'm kind of prepping for, for stuff that's going to happen later because, well, you'll see, you know, the main mechanic of this game. Uh, a thousand gil, that's going to be nice. And then another thousand gil. Again, double nice. I don't have to spend a dang thing. Even though I just grinded a bunch of money. And this actually is a plot crucial place once we get Princess Sarah. So we'll, we'll cover that later when we rescue her. But we have to go upstairs now. Ooh. And not really a whole lot up here. Except we get a leather shield and a blizzard. So we get the spell blizzard. That's helpful. That's money we don't have to spend at the magic shop. If only we had a class that could... Well, we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. We're going to equip it to Ark. And uh, if people are noticed, we also purchased a thing of Poisona. That is going to Refia. I hope people get what I'm doing here. But yes, Ark is going to be kind of my spellcaster. And Refia is going to be kind of my healer. Without going too much into the mechanic, you can pretty much design this game however you want. It's fine. This is just how I decided to do it. And with that, let's go ahead and head into the sealed cave. I like the music in this game. All right. And as people can see, we are level six right now. So we are perfectly fine for this dungeon now. And one of the things I do like about this dungeon is like, in 2, we had very long and complex dungeons. In this game, there are a few that will do that, but this is not one of them. All the earlier stuff aren't very hard to go through. So it, it's going to be pretty straightforward, especially in the 3D design. So that's going to be very helpful. We can get through the story quicker this way. I'm just making sure I'm going the right way because I don't want to miss chests here. All right, chest contain cure. So now we have another uh, magic spell, which we couldn't get in the starting village, remember? So now Refia has cure. That will be helpful. Oh, news! We're being attacked by flying coins. Really? I think they even called it, like, possessed copper or something like that. And as people can see, I've kind of decked out all the characters in dual wielding, mainly because this will help the process along a little bit. Do, 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 do. I love that fanfare. I never get tired of hearing it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go further into the cave. And as you guys can see, it is like Final Fantasy 1, where you have so many charges of that particular level and you have to use them wisely, especially early on in this game because you don't have many charges to work with. That's where leveling up comes in play because then you can expand how many charges you can carry. Oh, and apparently there was a button in this skull. Who knew? Oh, there's the wall is going away. All right, with that done, let's go ahead and see what's behind here. Oh, look, this must be our princess. Ingus, thank the heavens you're all right. Yeah, I'm hamming this up, guys. Milady, you must hurry back to the castle. We will take care of the rest here. But before you go, we need to borrow your mithril ring. There is no need. I will go with you. No, you won't. We have no room in our party. I have come here to banish the djinn and save my people, just like you. Again, no space in the party. Her royal highness has spoken. What should we do? Tell her no! You're a princess. Go back to the castle. She should be all right, as long as Ingus looks after her. No harm will come to Lady Sarah as long as I live and breathe. I love the contrast of the voice, Soother. Thank you, everyone.
And with that, Princess Sarah has joined the party. This also has another unique feature. I don't know if this was in the original game, but it's here. Where you can have a fifth party member, and occasionally they will aid the party. Oh, before I forget, press the square button whenever you wish to speak with me. What? What's a square button? And let's hurry. You didn't explain yourself. Yes, so now you have a following member, and occasionally she'll help you in battle. And, and this can happen in a couple of ways. For her, it's like she'll heal you, or she may attack. I'll explain the characters as we get them, but Sarah is not a big deal. She's just a healer. So she will, out of nowhere, decide to cure you, even if you're full health. It's one of the features that of 3 I think is fun and interesting. I just wished wish I could have had a little bit more control with it because there are a lot of points where like Sarah will heal me for no reason or other characters will do particular spells and it's not helpful. See, like here. So she decides to help us with a cure spell, but I'm full health anyway. And even if they had just given me like, you know, one chance to use it, but then again, I have a feeling Square was afraid we would just use them for boss fights. I get your argument there, but it kind of makes sense also story-wise to be able to do that. That's me, though. There we go. So now we have killed our, our zombie overlords, whatever that guy was. He was a Stalfos from Zelda! Oh my gosh, the Final Fantasy and Zelda universes are linked! Literally. Okay, so now that we have Sarah, we can go further into this dungeon. And we just got eye drops, should we need them. Oh, look, mummies! Oh, noes! But they obviously don't take a whole lot of hassle. Nothing really does in this area for me right now, because I overleveled. Because I do that. Alright, victi victory screen. Luneth gains yet another level. And people might also notice job level. We'll get into that later. Deeper and deeper into the dungeon we go. And here we go. This is actually the lair of the djinn. Prepare to meet your doom, Jin. This ring will banish you once and for all. How very Zelda of you. Nothing's happening. But why? Because plot convenience. That's why, princess. <laughs> your bubble has no power over me. Now that I am infused with the power of darkness. All right then. And now we have our boss fight with the Jin. So at this point, I'm also just looking at a guide really quick. I have a strategy guide and uh, just seeing what damage I can do. And I am able to use magic right now. So we are going to use as much as we can. But right now, let's kick some tail. I have you covered. And she cures us. So this was needed. Now I've wasted one of my charges. Again, more control over this. Would have been very helpful. An Arctic Wind! Ow! Almost 500 right there. I know somebody's gonna scream cheater. Oh, there we go. Boss is dead. Well, guys, I cheated. I'm sorry. Okay, so victory! Ark gains a level! Refia gains a level! You cannot escape the ring's power now! Of course he can't. We just beat him. Ding! No! Wait, 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 wait! The ring did something to us, too! Hey, what's going on? 
We must return to the castle, my lady. Do not fear for us. We will be fine. I hope probably change his voice eventually, but this is fun. What is happening? Ingus! Oh, noes. Will the party be able to escape this precarious predicament? I guess you'll have to find out next week.